Atlanta Gorgeous. It's Hot 1079. Atlanta's number one for hip hop. Home to birthday bash. You have to make sure you get your tickets immediately. Go to Ticketmaster.com. It's me, Mo Quick. Hello, Gorgeous. I am so excited to be on the Mo Show today. I told you. All month long, we are covering mental health. So today we have Northside Hospital on the line. My girl, Imani Langier is on the phone. Girl, please tell me I said your last name right. You did great, Mo. No, I didn't. Tell me how you said it. It's Laganier. Laganier. I have but Imani, call me Imani no worries. So she is the director of spiritual health, right? What's the whole title? Uh, the manager of spiritual health and education for the system. So that basically means that I'm the chaplain for the hospital and that I um, oversee the chaplains and train more chaplains uh, who are coming through our education program. That is so beautiful. Normally when you say hospital, we think medicine, we don't think God, right? That's right. So tell me how that intertwines with the hospital that you're a, a minister, are you a minister? I am, I'm also a pastor, yes. So tell me how that intertwines with medicine, faith. Well, faith, I think, is an integral part of the human experience and of our holistic well-being. So the World Health Organization defines faith as one of the three pillars of of health, um, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Um, People are constantly reaching for the spiritual in their lives. And they might Mm. not call it spirituality, but anytime you're looking for meaning, you're looking for truth, you're looking for what's beyond yourself and what ultimately connects you to other people, you're talking about spirituality. Wow, I I didn't even understand that, you know, a hospital would find it that important to incorporate that and I'm gonna assume the healing process. Is that where you come in? That is where we come in. Um, You know, where we meet patients usually is at, at a time of critical need. So when they're experiencing some form of emotional distress, which many people are during this pandemic um, and you know, in all times during the hospital experience and often at the end of life. Um, so when they're really trying to come together in themselves and with their families to figure out what their life meant, what comes next and what's most important to them. Absolutely, because it's not like you just have to see the patient. The patient has all those loved ones that care about them, that are suffering right along with them. I'm sure it's been an influx for you with this pandemic. Am I right? That's right. Our teams have really been working hard um, to try to meet the needs of not just our patients and families, but also our staff and um, Mm, many people who are working on the front line. Because you guys are people too. You're helping us, but you need help too. Oh my goodness. So your sta- incredible so how's your things happen. How's your staff been in this pandemic having to deal with so many different new patients that you wouldn't normally see, you know, and they have homes and families. That's right. They have needed to use their spiritual disciplines and resources now more than ever. They've been incredibly resilient. I couldn't be more proud of my team. Um, And they've been compassionate. You know, one of the things that happens in burnout is that it's hard to even access your feelings anymore. Mm, And so they've managed to maintain their loving, kind, listening, um, leaning in presence with people. And I, I'm just very grateful for the people that I work with. It's an honor to serve alongside them. Girl, and I'm blown away because you said a mouthful there. When I am dealing with my own stress, if I have even someone breathe on me, I'm like, I can't deal with that right now. I'm (laughs) I'm in my own stuff. So imagine them still being compassionate to their own patients. Oh my gosh. So as a fire self-compassion though, Mo, like you're right. I think one thing that women don't do well is saying no, we're at Mm. our limit you know? Yeah. And so for you to say no is actually a sign of health sometimes. It's really? Just, absolutely. A hundred percent. Because it allows you to say yes to the support you need on the other side of that. It, it's a signal. Okay. I'm at a limit. I need to set a boundary and now I can figure out what I really need to receive. So that's a good thing. Not a bad thing. <laughs> wow. Women everywhere. You heard her, right? It is okay. If you tell somebody, you know how you give somebody all five fingers at one time, some people call it the hand. <laughs> it's okay if you give somebody the hand. You need that time to breathe and decompress. What what is tell me something about um some healing practices that we could possibly do at home? 
I think the number one that we all have access to is breath, deep breathing. Um, breathe in for a count of three, hold it, breathe out for a count of three. Look online, there are tons of different breathing exercises that you can do that will actually reset your sympathetic nervous system. They'll calm you down. They'll make it easier for you to sleep. Sleep hygiene is really hard for women, um, uh, for everybody, but certainly especially for women um, to get enough sleep is huge. Go outside and take a walk when you can. Reconnect with nature. Notice something beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. Do something that's a little bit out of your routine. Um, just walking a different way around the block will actually increase your happiness. Are so, you serious? <laughs> yeah, changing your routine is one of the um, biggest indicators for happiness. Now and I, I want to switch that. Can, can, can you give me like th your three top favorite things to, to boost your happiness? to boost your happiness, um, spending time with people you love, laughing, mm -hmm. for me, eating well, you know, I've learned to cook some new things <laughs> this year. Um, Girl, you had yeah, to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and changing it up, straight up, changing it up, just do something a little bit different, you know, learn a different dance move, paint something, um, play with your kids, learn one of their games, just do something that's out of your comfort zone um, because it retrains your mind to look for another kind of excitement and that can lift your spirits too. Wow, and that's what we've been having a huge issue with in this pandemic. Spirits have been at an all time low. Uh, morale around a house, you would think you only talk about morale at a job, but people are not feeling each other when they used to be so in love with the other person. I guess because is that is that a is there a, a, a particular name to call what we've all been going through or is it just something that we're dealing with? Yeah, I'm not a mental health professional, so that I can't really say it's depression, but it's depression. We mm. I think are collectively depressed. Yeah, I can I can sad. agree with that. <laughs> we're sad and I think from a spiritual perspective, what I would call it is despair. Ooh. Uh, people are afraid that things can't get better and can't yeah. change. And when we start to lose hope, we lose our grip on connection with other people. If we stop hoping our partners can improve our lives, for example, to go to what you're saying, we'll stop losing hope in our relationships. And mm. so to regain hope, to find gratitude, gratitude is medicine. Try to be grateful for the little things that um, the people around you do well or do right. Try to forgive yourself for the little things that you do wrong. Being mm. kinder to yourself can start to release some of that tension that we feel and some of that heaviness that's coming down that's causing this collective despair. And I'll say, I'll add, you know, justice also helps. Some of these things are things that we can't control. We can't control women um, being pushed out of the workforce more, but mm. we can say as women, we're going to rally and we're going to put ourselves as important as the men in our lives and say, we need to continue to have upward mobility in our jobs. We can say that, you know, um, racial injustice, which is another pandemic that's happening right now Girl. is not to be tolerated. And so hope says we're going to continue to fight the good fight and make good trouble. Oh, good trouble. I was just on Instagram going back and forth with someone about the good trouble <laughs> because that is also something that we are dealing with as black women. We're black and we're women. Child, we got all this weight on our shoulder right now. It's, yes, we uh, do. Yes, we do. Tough. And for us to say to each other, you know what? I don't feel like superwoman today. I'm vulnerable mm. to this too. This mm. is really hard. Let's talk about it. Um, Northside has a hashtag talk about it right now. And it's for oh, that reason. Women need to stop just telling each other we're fine and start saying, this is the truth about where I'm going. What resource do you have? What are you doing, girl? What, what's helping mm -hmm. you? And let's do this together so we feel less isolated. When you feel, feel as less isolated, you feel less depressed. Oh my goodness. Imani, you just said a mouthful, girl. Absolutely. Ladies, it does us no favor to be quiet. It, it does us no justice to hold it in and keep it in. You got to let it out. And, and if we need to let it out to a professional, do you have any resources? Absolutely. You can go to www.northside.com, reach out to our behavioral health um, services. Uh, we have a wonderful team there. 
um, that can help you and can direct you to other services if we're not right for you. Northside is, you know, in partnership with all kinds of community partners um, that are happy to help people to lift up um, where we're all feeling down. And again, you know, hashtag talk about it is a great place to go to be in community with other women and share those resources with each other. Oh, Imani, you have been awesome today. Just the tone of your voice, girl. I'm like this. <laughs> I'm just smiling. You're just so calm. It, it really does bring a different vibe. And I really love that. And I appreciate you so much for being here with us today. Well, thank you for your time. This is my third radio interview ever. I, so I'm just really grateful to- And hey, you did here. great, girl. Say happy things about Northside. <laughs> you did awesome Imani we appreciate you so much Atlanta gorgeous I am going to put those resources she just talked about on our website if you want to visit it go to hotspotatl.com I hope that you are continuing to keep your mental in a healthy space make sure you don't move coming up on the way it's so much more coming up on the Mo Show right here on Hot 107.9